Hey, hello again and welcome everyone to G Squared where excellence is epitomized. I'm Gilly Gills here to simplify things for you. So, you've studied, you've done all the hard work, you have done all the things that you could do to prepare for this exam. And now it's exam day, it is D day. Yeah, you have to think about exams like it's warfare. Yep, you're like you're like a soldier going in. Yeah, you have trained, you have studied, you have done all of those things. But you can't just go into the exam without a strategy. You have to go in with a strategy. Something, you know, how am I going to tackle this exam? How am I going to deal with it? What should I do first? You know, everybody has to have a strategy when they're trying to solve a problem. And just like warfare with the generals at the table moving around soldiers and stuff like that, you're like that general for your exam. You have to know how to move around your questions, so to speak, so you can maximize and get that A plus which we all want to get. So I'm here to just help you based on what I've seen and done myself, you know. There's some things that um some tips that you can use to do very well in your exams. So I just want to share those with you today and just explain briefly a few things for you. Alright, so number one tip when you're doing your exam, and you will always hear this, all the time. People are just nagging in your ears. You know, manage your time. Manage your time. You must manage your time. It's very important that you do well with your time management. So how would you manage your time in an exam? Well, one of the things that you need to do is do not spend more, um, a lot of time on certain questions. Right? In your exams, you might see a question that says, do not spend more than 30 minutes on question 1. It means that if you reach 35 minutes and you're still on question 1, you're not using your time wisely. It's best if you just leave question 1 and move on to a different question. You know, because you're not going to finish your exam in that case. Alright, so manage your time well. Move on from questions as soon as you can do that. Second thing you need to do is maximize the marks on things that you know. You know, um, people feel like they're going on an exam and question one is question one, so I must do question one first. It doesn't work like that, you know. You know what I mean? You don't have to do question one first. It's the first question on the paper, yes, but nobody said you must do it first or you're going to get marked down if you're doing the question one first. So what you should do is really go through the paper, see the questions that you can do, and try to do those questions very quickly. Maximize the marks on those questions. You know what I mean? To make sure that you have gotten all the points you can get from those. When you finish that now, you're then going to move on to the more so-called difficult questions where you feel like, boy, I'm not going to get the most out of this, but at least you'd have secured some points in the bag already. Alright, so that's your second tip. Maximize the marks that you can get. Third tip is that you have to look for key directive terms. You know, questions are written by examiners to confuse students. And they're trying to decide for the students who really know what they're doing. And in the questions, there are some terms that you'll see that is really telling you and asking you to do those things. Define, explain, evaluate, discuss, you know, annotate from a biological perspective. These are terms that you'll see in your exam. And what happens most time is that students just get... Um, distracted by the other parts of the question and not see those key terms which the question is really asking them. So when you go to your exam, look for those key terms. You don't have to underline them, you know, but make sure you have identified them so you can interpret the question that is being asked of you. Alright, so that is the one now. Look for key directive terms. The fourth thing that you should do when you're doing your exam is remember this very carefully. It's quality above quantity. You know what I mean? Students tend to feel like, hey, if I write a lot, I must get a good grade. It doesn't really work like that. We are looking for quality work, not necessarily a lot. We'd rather read half a page of an essay which is riddled with good work than to read six pages when it's just repetitive and it's not going anywhere. You know what I mean? So look for quality versus quantity. And that has to come back to you knowing your facts. And once you know your facts, then you can just elaborate on those facts. You know, science doesn't really care about our opinions, really. Science really looks at facts. So once you have facts and you can defend and explain those facts, that's what science is all about. If you're writing an opinion piece, fine. 
you can explain and talk about your opinion. But once it's a scientific based thing and it's a factual based thing, stick to the facts because that's what we're looking for as examiners. You know, so that's the fourth point. The fifth point is that you, you must always show your working. You know, you must always show your working when you are, you are doing anything. Um, if working is required, showing, off, showing your working is required, then you must show your working. Because examiners want to see that you know what you're doing. You understand the process of getting to the answer. So this is a student who didn't just copy and get an answer. This is a student who knows what they're doing. You know, and then didn't just write down an answer because they didn't know what to do. So when you show your work in the examiner, will be more likely to give you the marks or most of the marks because you know what you're doing, but you probably just do a little miscalculation somewhere and get something wrong. But they can actually follow what you're doing. And that is important because we want people to know what they're doing as professionals in the world. We don't want any flukes to um, become professionals, so to speak. People need to know what they're doing. Yeah. So, that's our fifth point. Always show you're working. Our sixth point is you must be prepared to apply the knowledge that you learn. Let's face it. We're being taught things, we're learning things to solve a problem. We're being taught things and we're learning things to apply the knowledge that we have in the real world. So, students tend to think that they're going to get back the same sort of wording that they will find in their notes in an exam and it doesn't work like that because examiners want to know that you can solve a problem in the world so they're going to word questions based on problems that you may encounter and then they're going to ask you to solve those problems so what you're going to have to do then is be prepared to apply the knowledge that you have of a certain concept or idea to solve a problem you know, and then now the last and final tip here is always about multiple choice. Many exams come with multiple choice questions. And let me just explain a few things here for you. For multiple choice questions, you usually have four options. You know, four options and two of those are crazy options. Crazy, crazy options. They clearly cannot be the answer. You know, so therefore you should never ever choose those two options, no matter what happens. Those two options should not be chosen. You know, the next two options, one of them is the answer, one is um, very close to the answer. So the, that one is the real distractor. That is the one that will get you to really start thinking, you know, do I really know my stuff? And that is what, where you're going to have to look back on your study, look back on the groundwork that you have done, look at the training that you have done as a soldier, you know, which will then put you in a warfare situation. You're knowing warfare with your multiple choice question. You know what I mean? And you have to make a decision. A decision, I mean, with soldiers it's life or death, but with you now it's more right or wrong, but still it's similar. You know, so you have to decide, is it A or is it B of the two close options? And, you know, once you have done the groundwork and you have done all the things that you should have done in the past to prepare for the exam, when it comes to that point, you made the right choice. Just believe in yourself, have the confidence in yourself, you know? And so these are just seven tips that I find very useful in doing exams. They have worked for people, they have worked for myself, and I hope you find them helpful too. You know, just try to put them in practice in whatever you're doing. So I'm Gilly Gills for G Squared, where excellence is epitomized. Like the video, subscribe to my channel, G Squared Academy, and all the best in your exam.